Hey guys, Don Grayson, uh, KWI Second Shift Lead Instructor. Hey guys, we're gonna do some how-to videos. Today we're gonna do a combo monster. So what that is is a TIG group and TIG height and then a 718 fill and cap. Uh, the test is on a 45 degree angle, uh, so stay tuned. All right guys, so here at KWI you have four hold points. Uh, your very first hold point is tacking it up in position on a 45 degree, te or 45 degree angle. Uh, you're allowed plus or minus five degrees, so you can either have 50 degrees or you can have 40 degrees. This one's on a 45, uh, so that is our very first hold point. Your second hold point, that is gonna be your root. After you put your root in, uh, you have to go find your QC and have them check off on it. Your third hold point is your fill. Once you fill it out, uh, stop, and then you're gonna go get the QC, have him buy off on it. And then your fourth hold point, that's gonna be your cap, your final pass. Uh, if it's all good, uh, go get the QC, and he'll buy off on it, and then you go to the bin. All right, guys, so we're at our second hold point. Uh, we're getting ready to put a root in. I got the, mach the machine set out at 110 amps, kind of what I like to put a root in at. Uh, remember, you can have flush to an eighth of an inch. Uh, no suck back, uh, no cold wire, no any of that, lack of fusion. Uh, so what I always like to do is I like to start with my weak hand first. So I'm gonna start with my left hand, put this side of the root in, the left hand side of the pipe. So here at KDRI, you have to weld the left hand side of the pipe with your left hand and your right hand side of the pipe with your right hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna put the, this left hand side root in. Alright guys, so we got our left hand side in, now we're going to switch over and do the right hand side. Alright guys, so we got the root in. Now the next thing that we're going to do, um, we're going to call QC and have him buy off on it. Uh, this root is good, uh, flush to an eighth of an inch all the way around. Everything's tied in, there's no lack of fusion, so this one's good. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my hot pass. I have the machine set at 210 amps. Uh, it's kind of hot. Alright, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my hot pass. Again, I'm going to start with my left hand. Uh, I always run my weak hand first. That's way I can make a better tie-in with my dominant hand. All right guys, so we just got done putting our hot pass in. Now we're gonna switch over to our 718. Um, you can do it two different ways. You can run 332 or 1 8. Personally, I like weld 332. It's a little slower, but I can make them look a lot better. So I got my machine set on 91 amps, what I like running my 332 at. Um, so now we're gonna start working on our fill. So on my first fill pass, I like to run two beads. Um, after that, I'm gonna run two more directly over top of that, and then I'm gonna run three. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start with my second fill pass. Again, I'm gonna run two beads, uh, and then after that, I'm gonna run three. All right, so we just got done. I put another fill pass in, I ran two beads. 
All right, now I'm gonna switch over and I'm gonna run three beads now. So I'm gonna run one at the bottom, one in the middle, and then one at the top. Alright guys, so we just got done running our three bead uh, fill pass. Again, uh, I'm gonna run another three bead. This is gonna be my last fill pass. Alright. Alright guys, so now that we got it flushed out, that is our third hole point. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this 332 wheel and I'm gonna run it around this bevel right here All right, the reason I'm gonna do that is so instead of trying to follow this little bevel all the way out Now I'm gonna cut into it about a sixteenth That's way I make a good straight cut and then that's way I can follow it out and my bead will be straight all the way out for my cap Alright guys, so now that we've got our ring cut all the way around, it's very important to keep that straight. Or otherwise, when you put your first bead on, it's going to be real, real wavy. Now, waviness is acceptable as long as it's not over an eighth foot inch or it's not under flush. Um, but in all reality, when you're taking a weld test, you want it to look uh, as presentable as it can possibly be. So, it's very important to keep that line straight. That's why you, when you strike up, you can follow this line all the way around. That's why it won't be real wavy. Alright, here we go. Start our cap. Alright guys, so we just got done finished capping it. I put a 5B cap on it. Uh, it's all flush to an eighth of an inch, so according to the ASB Section 9, uh, this would pass. Um, there's no undercut, no porosity, no grime marks. So, with that being said, this one's good to go. You have now learned how to pass a combo monster.